Right, welcome back to the Tap HR podcast and YouTube channel, and welcome back to the amazing, the fantabulous Anita Ascot Brooks. Welcome. Hi, Trish. How are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you. <laughs> so today we're going to talk a little bit more about leadership. So delve into what that kind of means in practice and how you and I can support businesses with better leadership. So killer question to start off with, what's the difference between leadership and management? Because I find that businesses get a little bit confused about those terms and sometimes think they're the same thing, whereas to me, they're very, very different. But what do you think? Yeah, that's such a great question because, again, whenever I do any training with clients, that's always one that comes up that, you know, well, they're just the same thing, aren't they? And actually, they are quite different. So management is more about the process than the task. So it's your, I don't know, recruitment processes, your budgeting, your, um, you know, your, um, what else? Um, what other processes? <laughs> we were just having a chat, weren't we, saying that today <laughs> our brains are going blank it's a friday i do apologize so yeah it's much more about the reporting the activity the business the day-to-day -day stuff that we need to do in our role that's all about process mm -hmm. wherever whereas the leadership side is much more about people and strategy so the bigger picture how where is it we want to be going how are we going to kind of get there and how do we make sure our people are on board with that how do they, you know, the people know what it is that we're going to be doing and that they want to help us achieve that strategy. So they're quite clearly defined, although there are some bits that are kind of in that grey middle area. Um, mm. so for example, you could argue that um, giving performance feedback should come under a, a management trait, but then you could also argue, well, it could be a bit of leadership because it's about people. So there are some grey bits, but if you go with that general rule of, you know, task and process based, and then leadership is that people and strategy base. You're kind of going down the right right track. And of course, we we know, and, and you know, we both work with Trish. You know, people who can be fantastically effective leaders, mm. not so good at the management stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the opposite. You know, somebody can be a really good manager, and it's all about the the day to day and the and the task focus, but actually not very good with the people and the bigger picture stuff. Mm. So, but the joy with either of those is you can learn. You know, and some people you've heard, we've all had the phrase natural born leaders. Um, and that is true. But can I learn to how, how to develop my leadership style? Absolutely. So mm. that's the joy is that, you know, you can learn to do both. And I don't know if this is a really generic and big question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because I know you can take it. Um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> um, what, how would you define a good leader? What is it that makes somebody good at leadership? That is a big question. No. Um, and I think, I think, and I'm sure some people will shoot me down for saying this, that it depends on who you're leading. Mm -hmm. Because so much of that leadership style and, and traits should be adapted to meet the individual's needs. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I want an, if I was working for an effective leader, perhaps it might be slightly different to somebody else. Now, I'm a very people-focused person, as you well know, Trish, um, and it's all about the people and getting people on board and giving them the opportunity to, to, to talk and have their say and engaging and all of those and looking after their well-being. All of that is really important to me, as well as understanding how my role fits into the bigger picture, what is going on in the wider organisation. All of that's important too, but less so, mm -hmm. whereas, the next person next to me would maybe want that as their priority. So I think there are some generics, like just, you know, what I've just said, but I think depending on the individual, it, it's really dependent on whether you think they're a, an effective leader or not. But mm -hmm. I suppose as a, a, a kind of catch-all, I would say an effective leader knows how to adapt their style to meet the needs of every single member of their team. Mm -hmm. That would probably be my... You could handle that question. You're all right. <laughs> I got there eventually. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk a little bit more then about how people can support leaders. So I think one of the things I've seen quite a lot in my career is somebody is an awesome manager and then they get promoted to a leadership position, but there's no kind of help and support to ensure that they're the best that they can be at being a leader. Yeah. 
what things do you think businesses can do to help support people that make that jump or indeed leaders that come from another organization to lead within your organization well there's i'd say there's some basic things there so that leader has to be very um aware of things like your mission your vision your value set within your organization um, and hopefully if they've been internally promoted they are very clear on that and they know what behaviors they should be demonstrating there but potentially not so that that would certainly be something that i would make sure they're on on, on the par with mm. because we know behavior breeds behavior so if you're demonstrating poor behaviors as a leader the likelihood is that your team will do the same mm. um for me i think a really good option when it comes to leadership is having a mentor so having somebody who's you know, been in that role, whether it's internally within the business or as an external mentor, somebody that can help them to guide them with those questions that they have. It could be a formal kind of mentee mentorship relationship or more of a relaxed informal one, but really be there to kind of guide them through those tricky situations that I'm sure they're going to experience um, that can really help. I think that works brilliantly. So maybe kind of some kind of um, mentor program within the organization. They could get a coach. I think business coaches are very powerful um, and I've been working with a coach recently actually and just just getting you to think about things differently if there's been a step up from management to leadership then you do need to look at things a little bit differently so I think a coach could really help with that and again you can outsource those quite easily there's a fantastic array of people you know across the country who do business coaching which is fantastic so you can certainly um, engage with one of those and then I suppose it's the relationship side of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that close connection with the rest of the leadership team, if there is a team at that level, um, understanding how they all work and fit together, because that's, uh, you know, another a shift there in that, in that team dynamic. So understanding that and perhaps exposing them to different leadership styles mm -hmm. might be useful. So I don't want to go down the route of they must have leadership training, but there's certainly elements of development there that would really help people. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, if somebody's done, we talked, we had a previous podcast, didn't we, about insights discovery? And mm -hmm. you know, it's something I'm very passionate about because the value of it is just incredible. So, you can do um, leadership development following on from an insights discovery program. So, once you found more about yourself, you can then go down the route of actually, how do I lead others? What can I learn about myself there? How can I be then more flexible and adaptable to meet the needs of my team around me, which is really, excuse the pun, insightful. <laughs> um, so so there's always different things like that. Um, situational leadership is another fantastic model or tool um, that I've worked with previously, which is fantastic, which is very much about, you know, it's about my people, not about me. So mm. how do I adapt my style to meet their needs, which is brilliant as well. Mm, mm. I think... Um... The point that you were making about mentors, uh, personally, I think is a brilliant one. And I always mm -hmm. try and choose mentors for myself anyway. So it's kind of just my individual opinion. But I, I always try to choose mentors who think really differently to me and like push and challenge me. And I have to say that when I was back in the corporate world, that was really helpful because it made me, forced me to look at things in a slightly different way. So I guess that would be my tip. If you're picking a mentor, try and pick someone who's going to push you in a slightly different direction to the one that you're comfortable with, because that's kind of where yeah. you're going to yeah, that's a great tip, Trisha. I love that. And I think the relationship between your your mentor and also your coach, if you have a coach, is really key as mm. well. You know, if you haven't got that trusting, you know, I can kind of say anything here. It's a safe space. I'm I'm not going to feel silly. Mm. You don't get the full benefit out of that relationship. So selecting your mentee or your coach is really, really key. You get mm. the right person. Mm -hmm. And what about measuring leadership and good leadership? So, you know, I love a, a diagram. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a maths person, but I love a diagram. I mean, I love <laughs> um, how can businesses go about measuring leadership? Because to me, I suppose in a way, it's kind of a little bit intangible. Mm. But if, if we're supporting our leaders, how are we going to know that they're doing a good job? Well, a big thing for me, again, I'm, you know, I'm all about the people would be what's morale like mm. in the business. So whether you do some kind of temperature check, check, and that could be an all singing, all dancing staff survey, or it could be an, an you know, Microsoft Teams form that you send around to people. Um, mm. You know, what's the, what's the feeling like across the business right now? 
And mm. um, we've all heard that expression, you know, people don't leave bad businesses, they leave bad managers. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer that that's true. Um, so I think that's always great. Get a feel for what's going on in the business and understand that in more depth. Um, so certainly that, the morale, you've obviously got things like turnover, you've got your basic, you know, your KPIs that you would always use. But for me as well, it's around, you know, leadership we know is about people and strategy. So where are we at with that as a business? So one, what's the morale like with our people? Two, are our people getting the, the management that they absolutely deserve in their role? You know, are they having their one-to-ones? Are they having performance conversations? Are they having quality feedback given to them? Do they get development opportunities? Do they get a chance to, you know, um, perhaps move to different departments and experience different things in the organisation? Whatever that looks like for your business. Mm. For me, that's a great measure um, alongside the kind of finance stuff that we would naturally measure anyway. And sometimes businesses are so focused on the bottom line that they actually miss the people side and and of course, that's going to ultimately hit their bottom line because then people will leave. Then you'll have to re-recruit. And we both know how much it costs. I don't know what the average is at the minute, Trish, but at one point it was like £1,500 to recruit for a you know, fairly junior role within a business. I don't know, it's probably moved since then. But, you know, that's a massive hit on your bottom line. And and sometimes that connection's lost. You know, we, we don't realise that if our people are unhappy and don't feel supported, that it's going to affect us hugely. Mm. Um, so, so if we're not focusing on the people, we're really missing the trick. Yeah, no, I completely agree, and that's that's how you and I make a living. So. <laughs> Absolutely, because we can we know how important people are, you know, and and without our people, we wouldn't be here as a business. So, mm. how can we not look after them? Um, it's a, it's a no brainer in my yeah, mind. Exactly. And just for anyone who's interested in terms of um, the point that Anita made around uh, temperature checks, um, mm -hmm. there's a really fabulous tool that I recommend to my clients called Find My Metrics. And if you're watching us on YouTube, if you kind of scroll down, you'll probably see another video from uh, between myself and David Godden from Find My Metrics talking about employee engagement and how their tool can help and support. So make sure that you do that too. Alrighty, so let's think a little bit more about authentic leadership. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I often found quite different, difficult when I was in the corporate world was being a HR director and being able to kind of bring my authentic self to work. So, you know, me, I'm a little bit quirky, a little bit different. Um, <laughs> I am a bit of a geek, um, a little bit of Pokemon, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but sometimes it was really difficult to just authentically be me in the workplace because there's kind of an expectation of, the way that I should be and the way that I should behave in a senior leadership role. What are your thoughts around kind of authentic leadership and how people can be authentic leaders in the workplace? I, I, funny, I was thinking about this the other day, but there's different meanings around authenticity as well, isn't there? You've got, so for me, you were saying, you know, you're a bit quirky. How much of that do you share within mm. that work environment for me is kind of one thing. And then the other element of being authentic is around the whole, you know, my vulnerability. So I remember a good few years ago now going on some mental health training for managers, which was run by Mind, which was fantastic. And the lady in there, she what she said really resonated with me. She said, um, she said, you know, we, we shouldn't be afraid to be vulnerable with our team. And I kind of sat there for ages thinking about that and thinking about, you know, 20 years ago when I used to manage teams I'm thinking I would never have done that I would never have, have, have shared that I was perhaps not having a great day or was you know suffering with some perhaps some mental health issues or you know whatever and and that's how much things have come on mm -hmm. and I think that's incredible so for me your personal stuff is is what you're comfortable sharing um because that's you being authentic if it's not you know don't feel you have to share your life history and your life story with people if that's not what you would naturally do, because that's then not you being authentic anyway, but you share as much as those as appropriate for the relationship. And you have to, of course, have those professional boundaries. Yeah. You know, in your role as a HRD, you know, there were certain things you would probably share with your team and your colleagues, but and certain things that you wouldn't, because it's just not appropriate. Yeah. Um, and I think that shifted and changed as well over, over, you know, the last few years, but, I think it's very much down to you and your comfort level. 
but also being mindful of you know your expectations of your team too so if you want your team to be very open and very honest with you well then we've got to give a bit as well so um so there's that element to play and then the about the vulnerable bit I think that's so key you know it's when I used to manage people all those years ago you know I would never say to somebody or oh, it, it, you know it's just not something I would have done but now I think it's totally acceptable to say to your team you know I'm not in a great place right now and, and I need a bit of support and help um because the more likely we are to do that with them then the more likely they are to do it with us Mm. And, you know, we want our team to be open and honest with us and share if they're having troubles and difficulties. And to do that, they have to be a little bit vulnerable. Mm. So it's showing them that it's OK to do that. Yeah. Um, and I think that goes a long way with your people. You know, just because somebody's a manager or a leader, it doesn't mean they don't have stuff going on. We all know that. Mm. So just just share what you're comfortable sharing mm. and just so they know that that's OK. Awesome. And what about tools? And you, you've always got a model. <laughs> love, love a model. <laughs> love that you love a model, and I love a visual. And combined, we make. <laughs> <make that board. laughs> um, um. So, what about models, tools, great stuff that people can use to kind of help support their leaders? So, yeah, I would go back to do a bit of investigating around the situational leadership tool, which is Ken Blanchard. Um, and you can get training in that. It's brilliant. Honestly, it's so good. And it talks about how we as managers and leaders have to match our leadership style to the development level of the individual. So obviously, if you've got somebody who's just joined you, they're brand new, um, you know, they're very much in the stage of, of low competence, but high commitment. They want to do a great job. And I'm really excited about joining the company, but I don't really know what I'm doing yet then they would take, we need to take a very different approach with them than we would with somebody who's been with us for years. They know what they're talking about. They're very competent and confident in their role. So it's a great model. So that's certainly one to, to have a look at um, and do some research on. Um, and anything really that increases self-awareness for me. So I'll go back to, I said it before, I'll say it again, the insights discovery model, because you know, leaders are very self-aware or effective leaders are very self-aware and that, you know, they know the impact they're having on their team. And that's really important. And, and, and the great starting point for that is a psychometric tool like Insights, but there are plenty of others out there, you know, Myers-Briggs, SDI inventory, there's loads of other models um, that can help you with that. And I think the more self-aware you are, that's such a great starting point for kind of your leadership journey. Awesome. Anything we've missed, Anita? Things that people need to know about being amazing leaders? I think just to reiterate the point that it is a skill you can develop. Mm. Absolutely is a skill. And, you know, that's about having a plan in place. As with any development, have a plan in place of how you're going to do that, how you're going to measure when you're successful with that. Um, and I think just kind of be kind to yourself with it too. There'll be days when you'll go, oh, didn't do that very well but learn from that and and that's fine you know it's when we don't learn from things that haven't gone very well that, that it becomes an issue so just you know spend some time reflecting what did I do well what could I do even better next time and learn from each one of those situations um to develop that skill set awesome stuff so given that everybody has now heard how amazing you are and knowledgeable how <laughs> can they get hold of you if they want to talk about all things kind of leadership um, you can get hold of me through your fabulous app dun, 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 or your fabulous website. There's a link there to book some um, a free consultation with me, which absolutely we can jump on a call and talk about um, your needs as a business or your colleagues. Um, or alternatively, there's my website, which is askscottbrooks.co.uk. Oh, look at that app. Oh, and your YouTube channel. Is that what you're trying to get me to <laughs> love it you're all over the socials is what Trish is trying to say we've got you know there's everything from Instagram to TikTok to Facebook just search tap HR and you will be able to find me um but yeah me and Trish work really closely together just helping organizations to help their people be the best they can be so yes yeah, just reach out and we can see how we can support amazing stuff thank you so much for your time always a pleasure my pleasure Ooh.
Um, <laughs> and if anybody needs anything else from us, obviously do let us know. Just for the standard disclaimer, our podcast is obviously for information only. If you need to seek your own advice, please make sure that you do. And our podcast terms will be down in the links, whether it's below or above or to the side. It depends on what you're watching it on. Um, but you can have a look at those there. Thank you so much, Anita. My pleasure. Lovely to see you again. Big soon. Big soon. Bye.